I don't know about you, but I love a good single player campaign. And with some great games already out, 2016 is starting to look really promising. With that in mind, today Game Ranks brings you the top 25 single player games of 2016. Number 25, The Banner Saga 2. The three person indie development team at Stoic is creating a sequel to The Banner Saga, which by the way, is an absolutely gorgeous turn based tactical RPG along the lines of Final Fantasy Tactics or Shining Force. The draw to the original game is the sleep beauty inspired graphics along with the Game of Thrones like adult plot. The original is probably one of the best kickstarted games out there and it's really exciting they're making a sequel. Number 24, Gears of War 4, which is actually a game I didn't personally expect would ever exist, but I have to say I'm quite excited for how they continue the plot. Not to mention that the series has always been on the forefront of the graphical frontier and I'm very excited to see it on a next gen platform. Gears of War pioneered a lot of the conventions we see in third person shooters today and even though it's owned by Microsoft now, lots of people from the original team moved there with the franchise. Number 23, Homefront The Revolution. I've said it a few times before, I think Homefront is a game that could have been a lot better. It suffered from a lot of missed opportunities, but the franchise itself has now changed hands and the new developer has acknowledged that they do actually want to fix those things. This is exciting for me because I actually find the world of Homefront to be pretty interesting. Number 22, Ratchet and Clank. What is not simply just an HD up-res of an old game, Ratchet and Clank is a reimagining. And while a lot of the levels are very similar, there are sections of it that are entirely new. On top of that, the weapon selection from the original game isn't necessarily larger, but it is better. The game includes some improvements from later games, as well as just looking like a Pixar movie. Number 21, Hellblade is the latest from Ninja Theory, and they're describing it as an independent AAA game. Now, if you're familiar with Ninja Theory's combat style, you probably know what to expect there. Essentially, their promise for this game is that they're turning everything up to 11. If Ninja Theory is ever going to have a breakthrough hit, they're saying it's going to be this one. And considering I do really enjoy the combat in their games, I do hope this is every bit of success for them that they're aiming for. Number 20, Quantum Break is something we heard about for a long time, and I think it created some expectations that maybe people didn't understand. And while sometimes the opinion is fairly split on Quantum Break, it is an innovative title and I love the story to this thing. One of the best aspects of it is I think that it is essentially a unique game, and you don't get to see that a whole lot in the AAA shooter genre. Number 19, Far Cry Primal is an extreme departure for the Far Cry series, essentially setting itself in a time period in which there are no guns. And while it does retain at least a few of the elements that make Far Cry, well, Far Cry, I almost think that this is a more interesting version of the game. Having Far Cry exist in a time period that is so out there compared to what we expect very much heightens the stakes and makes the game more fun. Number 18, Hitman. The episodic reboot of the Hitman series Hitman does a great job with what you expect Hitman to be. This game feels like what the old Hitman games wanted to be. As somebody who's played all of the Hitman games and was a little disappointed with Absolution, which is still a good game, but just it didn't do everything Hitman needed to do. I enjoyed the first episode and I'm really looking forward to the next ones. Number 17, Mafia 3. After many years without a Mafia game, we're finally getting an update to a series that I think was never really given a fair shake. When it originally came out, people dismissed it as a Grand Theft Auto ripoff, and it really isn't. It's a much more in-depth, mechanics-oriented game that relied on elements like stealth and management of your gang to elevate the experience above that of simply a clone of a popular series. Number 16, Horizon Zero Dawn is a really unique looking game that is apparently post-apocalyptic where humanity has returned to a more primitive state, but instead of fighting animals, they're fighting machines out in the wilderness. I mean, it really is an interesting idea. The action elements look pretty solid too from what I've seen. And if the gameplay is half as creative as the concept itself, I think this is gonna be one of the bigger games of the year. Number 15, Tyranny. When Obsidian had a hit in Pillars of Eternity, it essentially opened the door for them to do more projects that they wanted to do. They've been kicking the idea around for Tyranny since 2009, and the result is a really pretty looking game that promises to break the mold a little bit more than Pillars of Eternity, but still promises that type of Baldur's Gate style RPG action. Number 14, Persona 5. Perhaps what is the most prominent take on the traditional JRPG, the Persona series has done a phenomenal job at modernizing old school RPG elements, and Persona 5 looks as though it's going to integrate a few 
more modern elements into that even more. Rest assured, it's not going to be an action RPG. It's the same traditional Persona RPG that we're all hoping for, so I'm pretty excited. I'm a big fan of this series. It's basically exactly up my alley. Number 13, Doom, is obviously the type of game that was made for you to play alone. Now, a lot of the time, first-person shooters are labeled multiplayer-only things, and a lot of games are going the direction of literally putting out games without single-player campaigns. Doom is going to rectify that. While it will have multiplayer, the single-player campaign is definitely why you're going to want to buy Doom. It looks to be every bit as fast-paced and hectic as the original series, with all of the updates that the first-person shooter genre has made to itself over the years. Number 12, Total War Warhammer is essentially all of the elements of the Total War series with the Warhammer classes. Setting a Total War game in a non-historical setting is something that has excited a lot of people on account Total War is a phenomenal RTS. The gameplay of the Total War series is probably some of the best RTS gameplay out there currently, and combining it with the Warhammer universe, in my opinion, could only create good results. Hopefully this breaks down the doors for more fantasy Total War games. Number 11, Stellaris is a 4X grand strategy game coming out, which if you're unfamiliar with the genre, focuses on military strategy and an entire nation or empire's resources, and how exactly you utilize them. Solaris takes place 200 years in the future, and the gameplay will essentially consist of colonizing and exploring, followed by governing. A lot of people are really excited about this game, and what it seems to promise, it's easy to understand why. Number 10, No Man's Sky. If you haven't heard anything about No Man's Sky by now, you are living under a rock. It's a procedurally generated space exploration game with 18 gajillion planets. The amount of planets almost seems like a made-up number, but this game features so many different mechanics from trade to combat to exploration and such a unique, beautiful art style that is, in all honesty, actually really impressive considering so much of it is procedurally generated. No Man's Sky is actually one of my highest priority games to play this year. Number 9, Final Fantasy XV. Another game that has been in development for an extremely long period of time and seemingly has been trying to redefine what Final Fantasy fantasy itself can be, looks largely as if it's going to succeed. Everything that we've played from this game has been promising. It's a gorgeous, beautiful game, and takes what we know of Final Fantasy and completely reinvents it in a manner that doesn't feel alienating. Number 8, Enter the Gungeon, which brings a lot of aspects of bullet hell and dungeon crawling into one retro packaged game that looks gorgeous as well as fast-paced and challenging. Some of the weapons in this game look really innovative and fun, and it looks to bring a more complex angle to the arcade elements of this genre of games that we all enjoy quite a bit. Number seven, XCOM 2 brings the tactical strategy game into its next iteration and looks like it develops the core concept, which, let's be honest, with XCOM being the most successful in the tactical genre, it's probably a good idea to focus on that rather than try to reinvent the wheel. Number six, Kingdom Come Deliverance is an RPG set in a medieval kingdom, but instead of focusing on spells and wizards and magic, instead it strives for historical accuracy. The game utilizes a classless role-playing system and does everything from including period accurate armor and clothing to using only combat techniques that you would find in an actual medieval battle, which could actually shift the paradigm of medieval RPGs. Number five, Stardew Valley is a Harvest Moon inspired farming simulator Later, where you play a character that moves out to the country to get away from their office job, you raise livestock, crops, craft goods, mine for ores, and also engage in all those weird social things that Harvest Moon had, including romances. It's a lot of fun, and the graphics are obviously about as nostalgic as they could possibly be. It's a game that Harvest Moon fans must try. Number four, Dishonored 2 is a sequel to one of my favorite games, period. I love Dishonored. From Dunwall to the Empire to the aesthetic to the powers to the pacing to the story to everything, I love this game and I absolutely love hanging around with the characters. So I'm excited very much to go back into that world and see what's happened after a few years, as well as occupy characters with developing powers that seem to very much expand on the scope of what Dishonored set out to do. Number three, Uncharted for A Thief's End. Now, the Uncharted series is a very cinematic one, and it looks as though this is the final one of them. Now, we don't know what's going to happen to Nathan Drake, but we do know that this is going to be a game that improves on the scale 
of an already massive series. And as Uncharted has constantly defined the genre that it occupies, A Thief's End most likely will do the same. Number 2. Dark Souls 3 Perhaps one of the most difficult series in gaming is Dark Souls, and it has gained a reputation as being a series that is definitely for hardcore gamers. Dark Souls 3 delivers. On top of being everything you expect Dark Souls to be, it is gorgeous and a game that I think everybody needs to at least try. And number one, Deus Ex Mankind Divided continues the story of a world where people are augmented with various machinery to quote unquote improve their bodies and in many cases make up for lost limbs. Mankind Divided is about the story between between people who don't have augments and people who do, and the increasing rift between them. There have been a few missteps in the development and marketing, but it seems as though those have been rectified, and let's face it, the Deus Ex world is probably one of the best and most interesting gaming worlds out there. A few bonus games for you, a side-scrolling shooting game called Cuphead, which brings a completely unique old-school Disney art style to a genre of game that's a lot of fun, Nino Kuni 2, the sequel to the original Ghibli-inspired JRPG, Fire Emblem Fates, another JRPG series that Nintendo has done an excellent job with, Near Automata, an action RPG by Platinum Games as a spin-off of the Drakengard series, Routine, an alien game that reminds me a lot of Isolation but without the weapons, therefore much more terrifying, and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which is a reboot of the Mirror's Edge series that looks to redefine what's possible in a parkour-based open world game. What are you looking forward to on the single player front this year? I'll meet you in the comments, let's have a discussion. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video, and we will see you again next time, right here on GameRank.